What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. I want to weigh in on the uh, Nick Cardillo situation, the Wisconsin freshman being ruled ineligible indefinitely by the uh, NCAA. Uh, I spoke to Cardillo over Twitter a couple of times over summer. He came across as a nice kid. Um, he was excited to be a Wisconsin Badger. He said that as such when he tweeted me. And, uh, you know, thanked me for doing a piece on him, but it's... It's the nature of the beast when you're the, when you're the best YouTube hockey analyst of all time. But, you know, the NCAA, because I get, there's no specifics, but they're working on a resolution of the situation. They've been looking into the specific matter for a while, quote unquote, a while, but uh, will not specify. So you gotta ask yourself, you know, what could it be? Um, you know, I was a fan of her deal, so I saw him play early this year back in January against BU. Uh, you know, good power forward, plays the game high, plays the game right, has a lot of skill, and went the second round of the Ducks. He's in Irvine, California, yeah, so he's right from Orange County. But, um, you know, I, I don't like what I'm hearing. I, I, I think it's not fair to the kid. I think they're really screwing him on this one. Uh, they held him out the two preseason games so far. One of them was against the uh, U.S. development team. And that, there was another issue with Frank Vetrano from B.C., another development kid, development team kid leaving Boston College and playing for the Junior Bruins, the Eastern Junior League. Um, you know, I don't know what to make of this, to be honest with you. Um, I know Kelowna holds his WHL rights, and if the NCAA is going to drag this on, I'd just sign with the dub if I was a kid. I think that's what's best for him long term. If the NCAA is going to continue to be, um, you know, not exactly transparent with what they're looking into, slash how long they're going to take, cause the longer they hold them out, you know, it's, it's just a negative thing on the kid. And he was a preseason rookie of the year for uh, the WCHA, so he's you know, obviously a great player, and I've could, really was excited to watch him play for the Badgers, but if this is going to be the deal, just tell the NCAA, you know, where it can stick it and, you know, head up to the dub, and I think that's what will be best for his development. If, like I said, that's the case, I was excited to watch him play at Wisconsin, but at the same time, you got to do what's best for you, and, uh, you know, he's a great player, and he's going to be a, a great pro, and, you know, for years to come, it'll definitely be a key member of the U.S. World Junior Team come January, but we'll see how it all wakes up, I, all works out, shakes up, works out, same thing. Um, but that's just my thoughts on the matter. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have looked into it, slash, how after the NCAA, I just want to talk a little bit about the NCAA play too. I can take a few shots at them. It's organized crime, is what it is. You know, it's all about television dollars. It's all about revenue. It's not about the student athlete. You know, I and this I'm getting off the subject to Kurt Dillis and talking about it on the the broader spectrum. I remember watching Tim Tebow play at Florida a couple years ago on TV. Um, you know, the, the Heisman Trophy was in 2007. Uh, you know, he's out there. All those fans are there to see him. And I think that they did a statistic. Uh, each, the Florida football program generated $200,000 in revenue per player. Florida tuition for the state student was like thirty grand with room and board and all that. So, you know, there's like a $170,000 profit the school's making off these players. And, you know, Tim Tebow is, you know, getting an education all that, but he can't go to a movie with, you know, if a booster wants to take him to a movie or something, you know, obviously, wouldn't be a girl. I'm just kidding. I get Tebow, but you know, you you can't accept that. And it's kind of like it's so two faced with it. You know, these teams will hold themselves out and change conferences, change everything, and then you know, and I think that's the that's the problem with the NCAA. That it's you know it's wrong, and I think it, it's so easy in the juniors versus NCAA battle to rule one side or the other and say you know the NCAA is all about education. No, it's not. It's not about educating the student athlete. It's about those schools making money, and anyone that doesn't agree with that's blind to the situation, you know, it's blind loyalty towards college hockey, and I love college hockey, I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying, there's, there's got to be something done on the NCAA, it's a corrupt organization, it's a monopoly, and, um, you know, something, they should look into their own practices before they start chastising kids to making choices that are best for them, but uh, that's all I got on the uh, Nick Cardillo situation, slash my thoughts on the NCAA on the whole, stay tuned for more episodes of the Power Play with CJ throughout the lockout and beyond, later guys.